So in my Chinese language learning, I have often been looking for content that has both subtitles and Chinese voices. And what's great is when I can take these subtitles and be able to manipulate them in some way, such as being able to copy and paste words to be able to do dictionary lookups. Now to do this kind of thing, you need to be able to take the subtitles in your video and really have a version that can be extracted into a separate text file, or at the very least copy and pasted. And the standard format used for subtitles on most videos is SRT, which you can open in pretty much any text editor. Now, if you have a video with subtitles like this, where it's in an SRT file, or you can copy and paste them in some way, those subtitles are called soft subtitles. But there are a lot of videos that have subtitles that are in a different format called hard subtitles. And in videos like this, the subtitles don't exist in a format that you can easily copy and paste them. They're actually baked right into each image of the video. So if you come across a video with hard subtitles, and if you want to extract them in any way or copy and paste them, it can be really hard because there's no way to really take the subtitles out of the video. Unless you use something like OCR or optical character recognition that would go through each image of the video and actually extract it. And there are some solutions out there that do this, but I spent a long time looking and I didn't really find very many great options. But in this video, I'm going to cover one of the options that I did find, which is called Video CR. Now I'll show you, this is basically some code that some developer put up on GitHub. And if you open this up, it looks really scary and there's like code all over the place. And it's like, you have to write something on this command line to get it to work. And so if you're not technical, it's probably hard to figure out how to use this. Luckily, the developer does provide what is called a collab notebook. Uh, and so you can open it up. And what this is, is it's basically a file that has all of the code, but you don't actually have to manipulate any of it. You just have to change a few parameters and then press a play button and then it kind of runs on its own. But even if you look through this, it looks kind of scary and intimidating if you are not technical in any way. And so I just want to show you how to use this tool because it's easier than it probably appears from what I just showed you. And even though it's a bit clunky to set up, it is a tool that has worked very well for me. And the quality of the output is really, really great. All right, so there's eight steps to this and I will just dive right in. So the video I'm gonna be doing this on is an episode of a YouTube children's cartoon that I've been using for my language learning called Pleasant Goat and Big Big Wolf. And let me just show you an example of this. This is the first episode of the 2023 season. It's basically a cartoon, but let me show you what the subtitles look like. So this is about a minute in. Okay, so if you look at this, you'll see that there are subtitles here, but they are hard subtitles. They are baked into the actual image of the frame. Other times you'll be on YouTube and there's this subtitles button or this captions button that might become available. And if that's available, it usually means that there's soft subtitles and these can actually be downloaded straight from the YouTube video. But these particular subtitles are hard, they are baked into the image, and so we need to use some kind of other method to extract them. So the first step is really just to download your video. And there's many methods that you can use to do this. On YouTube, I use a tool called YTDLP, which does involve running some terminal commands. And if you're not technical, maybe you don't wanna do that. There are also lots of other plugins and extensions that you can install into Google Chrome that will allow you to download from YouTube or really almost any other video site that you'll encounter. So what I would do is just Google search, how do I download a video from whatever site that you're using and you should be able to find it. All right, so the second step is then to load your video onto Google Drive. Now, the reason that I do this is because the tool that I'm gonna show you can link to your Google Drive and that's how it can access files. I think there's other ways that you can also give it files, but I found that Google Drive is just the easiest and I'm already using it. So what I have here is literally just uh, this file loaded on my Google Drive and it's as easy as that. And then the third step is you're gonna open up Video CR. So all you're gonna do for that is you're gonna go to the GitHub page. And again, if you want to use this kind of code way of doing it, you can. But what I do is I click this open and collab button, which will open the Video CR collab notebook. Okay, so then step four is that you want to connect your session. So when you open the notebook, if you look up here, you're gonna probably see something that says like disconnected or something like that. You'll see that mine does not say disconnected. It's got a check mark and it's got this stuff over here. Like basically you need to connect your computer to the server that this notebook is running on. So I believe that if you get to this page, it should be pretty obvious how to connect from this top right. You wanna basically hit connect and then wait until everything shows green here. So you have a green check mark, you have 
this other stuff that's green, and then you'll know that you're connected. Now, what this is basically doing is there are some other server out there which is running this notebook, and you are basically spinning up some space and computing power on this server that is being reserved for you for this period. I think this is run by Google. They're kind of giving you a little mini computer to be able to borrow for the purposes of running this code. Now, one thing that you might want to do is make sure that you're connected to what is called a GPU instance. And this is optional, so if, if what I'm saying right now is kind of going in one year out the other, you can kind of forget it, but basically, there's two different types of instance that you can run it on. One is on a CPU instance, and a CPU is basically sort of a normal type computer. It's the type of computer that your laptop probably is and almost everything else that you are using in your day-to-day -day life. Or you can upgrade that to a GPU instance. And a GPU is basically just another type of processing chip that is more powerful, especially for things like OCR, which involve analyzing images and extracting things, etc. So what I would recommend is that you switch your instance to a GPU instance, and it'll just make everything faster. So all you need to do for that is click this arrow here, go to change runtime type. You wanna make sure that under hardware accelerator, what it'll probably show when you first come up here is CPU. You wanna just make that go to T4 GPU. You might get a notification that says that you need to basically disconnect and reconnect, and that's fine. Save. So I was already connected to a GPU instance, so nothing happened for me, but what should happen for you is you'll probably notice it disconnecting and then reconnecting. And so you just wanna make sure that's reconnected again. And again, you'll know that is reconnected when everything up here is green. Okay, so then the next thing you need to do is make sure that your Google Drive is connected to this. So again, what's happening here is you've now reserved kind of a mini computer on Google servers, and you need a way of telling that computer where to find the files, particularly your video file. So what you need to do here is go over to this little file folder icon here, and you'll see some stuff here. Um, what you need to do is go to this third icon here, which is Mount Drive, and you'll see that there's a little Google Drive symbol here. So click on that. It's gonna bring you to this one part of the script, and it's gonna say, run this cell to mount your Google Drive. So all you have to do is press this little play button and go run anyway. Okay, and for me it says drive already mounted. Basically, I've already connected the drive uh, a long time ago, and so it doesn't show anything for me. What it should show for you is that you would get a pop-up and would say, connect to Google Drive. It'll let you do your connection and then you get back here hopefully. Okay, and so then the next thing that we need to do is we need to edit some parameters in this script before we run it. So again, there's a lot of very scary stuff here, but you can kind of just skip through all of it. Like you don't really need to read or really understand all of this. You just need to scroll down to this part of the script where there are a bunch of little things that you can input. And you'll see that there's an input file path, an output file path, a bunch of other stuff. So what you wanna do first is fill in your input file path. Now this is gonna be telling the script where your video is. And so what you wanna do here is you wanna to go to your little side menu here. Hopefully your drive has now appeared here. If it hasn't, press this little refresh button up here. Usually that'll get your drive to appear. So then you wanna navigate down into your drive. And I'm just here in this folder that has the video that I'm gonna be using for this demo. And again, it's this episode of the YouTube video that I just showed you. So all you're gonna do is you're gonna right click on this. You're gonna click on copy path. Then you're gonna go over to this input file path area and you're gonna click paste. And so what you see is that basically this is now the URL for the video that you wanna extract your subtitles from. And it's a link to a URL on your Google Drive. So that's your input file path. For your output file path, you wanna tell it where to put the output file. And usually all I do is I just try to have it go to the same file folder as my video is in. And so the easy way to do that is just copy and paste your input file path, put it here, and then you just need to change the extension. Right now it's still MP4, which is a video file, and so you just wanna change that to SRT. Third is your language. Um, it defaults to Chinese, I think because whoever made this script was a Chinese speaker. So I know that it works well for Chinese. I believe that it also works for other languages. And if you scroll up, you'll see that there's a link to a page that has basically supported languages and what code you need to put into the script for each of these languages. So Chinese and English is CH, 
I believe this is for simplified Chinese. At least I know that it works for simplified Chinese. I don't know if it works for traditional Chinese. There is a separate code for traditional Chinese. So if you wanted to do that, you would put in Chinese underscore CHT. And then you'll see that there are lots of other languages available as well. Again, I haven't tested these out, so I don't know how well it works, but it works well for Chinese. So take whatever language code and make sure that in this language code, it is CH. So the next one is use GPU. And I usually check this because again, that's why we connected to a GPU instance before so that you know we're now running a computer that has access to GPUs, which are again, more powerful for this type of task. And so you need to make sure to click use GPU so that you can utilize that power, which again, will make this all just go faster. And then you have your start time and your end time. You definitely wanna make sure to set this correctly. And I happen to know that this episode is 12 minutes and 37 seconds long. I usually make it like one second shorter because I have found that if you accidentally set it for a start or end time that is outside of the bounds of the video, it'll give you an error. And you may not even know why the error is there, but just make sure to set it so that it's either at the start or end time, or it's maybe one or two seconds before the end time. So confidence threshold and then similarity threshold, you don't really need to change. At least I haven't. Frames to skip, you also don't really need to change. Your crop X and Y and your crop width and height are ones that you usually wanna change. And so what this refers to is, and here's a diagram. This is basically specifying what window the program is going to use to search for subtitles. And so you can see here that for a video that is 1920 by 1080, what they recommend is these values for your crop X and your crop Y and your crop width and your crop height. These, these values are actually different from what's in here right now. But again, that's only for a video that's 1920 by 1080. If you have a video that is of a different size, then you just need to figure out what these values should be. And this diagram hopefully gives you an idea of how to figure that out. If you do some math, you should be able to, to figure it out. But luckily the video that I'm using is 1920 by 1080, so I can just take these values straight away. So again, they're saying crop X is 290. And it's saying crop Y should be 865. It's recommending crop width of 1430. It's recommending crop height of 215. And assuming I did it correctly, that's really the last thing you need to change. And really the next step is to just run the script. And that's pretty easy. You just scroll all the way to the top. You go to runtime and then you just go run all. And you'll see that it's gonna start basically executing each of these little areas of code one by one. Um, you can tell what it's currently executing. Basically, if you scroll through an area and it's got this little button that's got this little thing circling around it, you can tell that that's the one that's actually being run at the moment. And then if you scroll up, um, any that have already been run will have this little green check mark next to it and a time, and that time is just saying how long it actually took to run. So for me, this is running pretty fast because I already um, have run it before. And now it's on this, this cell, which is the main cell that's doing the work. So this is, this is where the actual work of going image by image th through the file is happening. It's basically going image by image. It's looking at that area of the screen that you have selected with these parameters. And it's doing some OCR to pull what it thinks this text is. And then at the end, it's gonna convert it to a subtitles file. And so this is the longest part of the, uh, of, of the process. And if you scroll down here, you'll see that it's like a bunch of things being executed and it's kind of like adding line by line. I don't really know what any of this means. If you get to the point where it's kind of doing this, you know that it's running correctly. And so now you just gotta wait. And another unfortunate part about this is there is no progress bar. So it's really hard to know how far along you are or if you're close or far away. And it can take quite a while to run, especially depending on the length of your video. What I recommend is just sitting back and letting it go. What I have found is that when I am running it on a video that's about 10 to 15 minutes, it usually also takes about maybe 10 minutes or so to run. And again, that is if I've selected a GPU instance to run it on. If I have not done that, it takes a lot longer. All right, so we're just gonna wait. All right, so I just used that time to study some Chinese flashcards and it looks like it's done. And you'll be able to tell when it's done when if you go up to 
this cell, you'll have a, a, a green check mark and it'll say it took 11 minutes to run that. So that's good to know. And then the last part of this is that it does output the subtitles down here. And so you can already kind of scroll up and check to see whether the subtitles seem approximately right. But actually because of how we set it up, it extracted those subtitles to an SRT file, which should now be in your Google Drive. And so let me go check. And it does appear to be here. If you open it up, it is also here as well. Sometimes it might take a few minutes to upload to your Google Drive, and so just be a little patient. But so far, it seems like it's worked. And so the last thing I usually do is test to see if my subtitles seem correct. And the way that I do that is I just open the video file. And I go up and I make sure that the subtitles are selected. And so this is pointing to the subtitles file that I just selected. This is VLC, by the way. I'm sure there's other ways to do it in other video players. And then you just wanna to go to some place in the video that has text. Okay, so this is a place in the video that has text. Right now it's showing the hard-coded subs. Okay, and it's a little hard to see, but if you look, you'll see that the there's kind of two subtitles overlaid over each other. Let me try to make it smaller and then... So uh, it made it smaller. So now you can see that you have the original hard-coded subs in the background, and then you also have what is the soft subs, and th this, this bottom smaller one is being pulled from the new subtitles file that we just created. And so you can kind of check to see if it seems like it converted things correctly, so for this particular frame, it looks like everything is correct. And you can just play it for a while and see if it looks like things are generally correct or not. Okay, so I just looked at a few subtitles and it looks like everything worked correctly, at least as far as I can see. So I'm gonna call this one a success. So that's it. Now you have your soft subs file and you can use it for whatever you want. Again, I found this to work pretty well. It would be nice if I had a program that had a nice graphical user interface where you didn't have to interact with any code or do any of the stuff that I just did. And so if you have found a program that is better than what I just showed you, please leave a comment down below because I would love to hear about it. All right, that'll do it for this video. If you liked this video, you might also enjoy my one year update of learning Chinese, which is here. And if you wanna see more language learning videos in the future, just click subscribe. All right, thanks again, everyone. Peace.